I almost feel like I should wait for the, oh, the clock just changed to 3 o'clock. <laughs> exactly. I believe this is about the most punctual I've ever been for a, a service or a program in ministry. And uh, a part of that is just seeing the incredible turnout here from friends and family of people who uh, knew and, and remember and just loved Gary and, and the impact that he's made on them. On behalf of the family of Gary Ketchum and also from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we want to welcome you to a celebration of life today. My name is Mike Taylor. I am the pastor of the Casper Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I will sort of be the MC for the first part of the service today. Uh, we have a, uh, a program that's available. If you didn't get one already, I think we got one in everybody's hands. If not, we, I think we have a few left still. Uh, there are a few announcements we need to bring to your attention. First and foremost, today's service is being recorded and live streamed, so we have to put the reminder out there. Please silence your cell phones. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can focus on sharing memories and, and taking this time to focus on Gary. Uh, so please take a moment to do that. The uh, next announcement along the way is to note that this is a celebration of life, but celebrations can be bittersweet. We recognize that. So I want to say this right up front to make it clear to everybody. It is okay to laugh. There will be some funny things that you will see, that you will hear. There will be some funny memories, and that is okay. 
I can't even think about it. When I went to visit Gary in the ICU, one of the things that I heard from several of the nurses when I just checked to see how they're doing was how contagious his smile was. Even when he couldn't communicate anything else and all he could share in that moment was a smile, that was enough. There was just a joy that radiated from him. And many of you have had to experience that firsthand. So, like I said, it is okay to smile. It is okay to laugh. But we do recognize as well that there is sorrow, grief, and mourning that is a part of this process as well. And so it is, it is okay to cry, although it'd be easier to cry. Yeah, I was going to swipe one, but you've got your own box. Um, I think Jesse has one down by her. Uh, we'll make sure you have tissue if you need it, especially if you're going to be up front. But we are made to be emotional beings, and this is not a normal process. This was not how, how life in this world was supposed to be. Uh, but we are here today, and so uh, we are thankful that you can, you can gather together to share those laughs and to share those tears. On behalf of the church family, I hope that you guys continue to share through this process. We know that Jerry, the girls, the whole family would appreciate your ongoing support because after today, there will still be a process. There will still be pain tears, memories. Can't help but think that in a couple of weeks, the next time a May 6th rolls around, it's going to be different. The next Christmas, the next Thanksgiving, the next time somebody just has a box of macaroni and cheese or a can of Pepsi. <laughs> See, laughs are okay. <laughs> there will be some laughing but there will be some tears. And so they appreciate your ongoing support. Part of the process of providing ongoing support may just simply be after today's service, joining us across our parking lot in the school gym for a fellowship meal. We want to thank those who have contributed to it. And as far as I know, there should be plenty. If not, I think I have some ramen in my office. We could probably... Anyway, um, speaking of the school, if you'd like to do something in Gary's memory... Uh, Gary said, if you'd like to make a donation to our Mountain Road Christian Academy School, that would be appreciated. There were other organizations that were also uh, important to, to Gary as well, including ADRA, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, as well as the hospice care, the Central Wyoming Hospice Care, that took such a good, good care of him in his final days. Uh, if you wanted to do something in his memory, they would really appreciate it. Beyond that, I think we have covered today's service. Um, like I said, it is being live streamed. For those of you who are watching along online, we are having some minor technical difficulties. Uh, so you're not going to get as clear a quality of some of the videos and slideshows that we will be sharing. Uh, but uh, we can make those available to you if you'd like to get a higher resolution of them. All right, I think that covers everything besides opening with a reading from Scripture and then a prayer. On the back of your program, you'll see a quote from Jesus in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Jesus says to, her, to his disciples, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. This translation says, There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If there were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this beautiful day that you've blessed us with as you smile down. Because you know how hard today can be for us. As we celebrate a life, as we mourn, as we grieve, as we laugh together to think about Gary and the fact that he now rests awaiting for your promises, especially the promise we just read. Lord, as we go through the service today, Lord, I pray that it would be encouraging to the family and friends. Lord, I pray that it would do Gary's memory well, but also remind people of the God who so abundantly worked in and through Gary. And Lord, I just pray that you'd bless today's service. 
be present, and help us to see you ever working. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we now have a video slideshow uh, that, Jess, or that Lacey prepared. Oh, the, some of the granddaughters prepared. Jesse prepared. The girls prepared. You'll hear from them in a minute, but uh, we have a, a slideshow for you. Switch off the one by the red light. This one? Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. This way, every Chris, with my wand of wind. <laughs> it's not a picture. <laughs> no, it's not a picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ernie, once again, well, he is best so half has to leave you behind. We sure want you to have a sweater on. Okay. 
Okay. Going up there to the bathroom. Mm. In Mississippi. The M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Is it exciting to get out of the house again? So I have to admit, that was a, a glimpse of, of the Gary that I got to know. Moving to the community just a year ago, sometimes when I invite people at the beginning of our, our service to our children's story, I've taken inviting the young and young at heart. Gary was definitely young at heart, even in his old age. I think if his body could have kept up with, with his spirit, he'd have put Methuselah to shame. High energy, even to the end. And it was evident for sure that he loved his dogs. <laughs> and the family too. <laughs> and sometimes. <sighs> so at this time, we get to share more of his sketch. We have granddaughters coming forward to share some memories. I want to give you an opportunity to start preparing your minds as well. In a little bit, we will have a very brief window if you have a particular memory you'd like to share that you haven't already seen represented or one of the girls doesn't talk about at this time, so. Gary was born on May 6, 1946, in Casper, Wyoming, to Charles Lacey Ketchum and Lily May Ketchum. He was the youngest of 10 children. When Lily was expecting Gary, his sister Peggy, the next youngest, was hoping for a girl so she could pass on the title of baby girl to the family. But of course, 
She was unhappy when she found out he was a boy, but changed her mind and fell in love with him once she held him. As a young child, Gary had a close shave with death. He was sick for a couple weeks with a high fever, and he would sit up in his crib and scream, finally laying down quietly. But his parents were concerned and took him to the hospital where they were told his appendix had burst. The doctor didn't expect him to make it through surgery and was amazed he lived through the ordeal. The doctor told everyone that it was out of his hands and his survival was in another's hands. But the family knew because everyone was praying for him, the church, his parents, his siblings. He could only eat from a bottle for a while and from then on his whole diet changed. Many of you know what a picky eater he was. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese was a diet staple. His mom even had to pay him a dollar once to eat a hamburger. Gary grew up in Casper, Wyoming, attending Willard School and the Seventh-day Adventist Church School through elementary school. He and nephew Rick spent most of their growing up years together and thought of him more as a brother than a nephew. He attended East Junior High for ninth grade and then headed to Platte Valley Academy boarding school for the remainder of his high school career. While attending Platte Valley, he learned much from his boss, Fred Neiser, who would later become a relative when he married Fred's niece, about handiwork. But knowledge would be the foundation of his career. While there, he was in the select singing group, The Balladeers, and he and his friends would often play their guitars together for the other students. He graduated from Platte Valley in 1964. Gary attended Casper College as a music major. That's not much of, much of a surprise. Although from his own accounts, he may have skipped classes to hang out with Don West. Gary met the love of his life through his niece, Carlene. Carlene attended Campion Academy with Geraldine Louise Brown and were great friends. Jerry came to Casper to visit Carlene and met Gary, and the rest is history. He married Geraldine Louise Brown of Loveland, Colorado on October 8, 1967. One year later, they added a daughter, Levita, to the family. Two years later, foster daughters Melinda and Kendra joined the family, and two years after that, daughter Valerie was born. For a brief period, after they were married, Gary and Jerry lived in Loveland and Denver, Colorado, but spent most of their life together in Casper. Gary worked for the Natrona County School District from 1970 to 2001 as a bus, bus driver and as custodial supervisor at CY Junior High, Dean Morgan Junior High, East Junior High, and Centennial Junior High. Many co-workers and employees have said what a kind man and a good boss he was. He was spoiled by many of his fellow workers, particularly the ladies who ran the cafeteria, making him many goodies. Many students who rode his bus and attended these schools remember him fondly. Gary was a jack of all trades. He was a cook and a housemaid doing much of the cooking and cleaning while Jerry worked and attended school. He was a fashion connoisseur going shopping with all his girls, giving opinions on fashion, and waiting patiently till they were finished. He was a mechanic. He kept all of the family cars in good shape and running smoothly. He was a plumber, electrician, and all-around handyman, preferring to save money and do the work himself. There were often many projects started around the house, but not quite finished. He would often get teased about all the unfinished projects, but would always respond that he just hadn't gotten around to it yet. This worked just fine until his nephew, Mike, cut the bottom out of a styrofoam cup and wrote to it on it and gave it to him. His handyman skills also included home remodeling jobs with Ron Hughes which helped keep his girls in Christian schools and helping his son-in-laws with home projects as well. Gary was a family man, 
Family was the most important thing in his life. He would do anything for any of them. If one of his grandchildren was sick, he didn't hesitate to take them to the doctor. But if he was sick, he wouldn't go, claiming he had white coat fear syndrome. During the 82 snowstorm, he chose to travel through the storm to reach his daughter Valerie, who was visiting nephew Rick's family, so that she would have her family there for Christmas and her birthday. It wasn't just immediate family that was important to him, but also extended family and friends. When cousin Tracy was concerned about leaving her diabetic mother to attend Campion, Gary made sure to reassure her that he and Jerry would check on Susie every day and she didn't need to worry about her mom. He would make sure she was okay. He spent many hours with his nephew Ron cruising around the roads of Natrona County in Ron's sheriff vehicle. Also, many camping trips were made with friends Ron and Starla and later Weldon Treat and family. Gary was a man people were drawn to, from children to the elderly. Babies loved him. He would pick them up, give them face-to-face, -face, direct eye contact, and hold a conversation with them. They loved it. He was a real tease. No one was exempt from the neighbors, John and Emmett, to the servers in restaurants and cashiers at the local mini mart. He had regular hangouts. Denny's, Platte River Restaurant, Sherry's, Guadalajara, Johnny J's, Hardee's, and Burger King, to name a few. He would tease the servers, and they would tease him back. They always knew exactly what he would order and were often ready with his half-diet, half-regular Pepsi before he even placed his order. He was a weekly regular at some of these for breakfast, hanging out with all the retired gentlemen and making new friends. One of his favorite pastimes with his nephew Mike was to drive around in his Jeep truck after a snowstorm, pulling people out of ditches. He said he met a lot of interesting people that way. Gary had a very mellow temperament. He claimed that he had battled temper, but apparently God helped him with that because his family never saw it. Nothing seemed to rattle him much. On one family occasion, the family was traveling back from Colorado and there were icy patches. Their car hit one while Jerry and the girls were terrified as they saw mile markers directly in their path. Gary was calmly attempting to get control of the car. Just before the car plunged off the road, he said in a calm voice, well, we're going off the road. As the car was careening in the ditch, there was a moment when Gary gained control. He hit the accelerator to stop, to keep from getting stuck in the ditch. And just before the car re-entered the highway, he once again said in a calm voice, well, we're going back on the road. <laughs> Gary had many hobbies and interests. He loved old classic movies and old classic cars. 1964 Buick Rivera was his favorite. Trains, musicals, Broadway shows, classic TV, Hallmark movies, Pepsi, and Buicks. However, one of his biggest loves was music. He played the Hawaiian steel guitar until arthritis made it impossible. He sang tenor in the Mountain Road Singers group for many years. The house was always full of music. The whole house would shake with the music playing from his stereo. Jerry never had to tell the girls to turn down their music because Gary would always play his louder than anyone. After retiring from the school district, Gary went to work for the Timberline Hospitalities as their head maintenance at Days Inn from 2004 to 2010. He worked with and met many new people. He would come home with stories of witnessing to different people. He was a kind man who cared deeply for people and enjoyed sharing his love of Jesus with others. His favorite pastime was spending time with close friends, his children, grandchildren, and his dogs. <laughs> he was always willing to do whatever other people wanted, even if it wasn't something that he was interested in doing. Because of his health, he couldn't always physically do the same things. Often, he would sit in the car and wait for others to finish their outing, but he never minded. He just liked spending time with them. Gary enjoyed several years of retirement with his wife. They spent much of it traveling to visit family and enjoying the company. 
Gary felt blessed that he had his daughter's family living with them for a while because it meant he was able to spend more time with them. He loved spending time with his grandchildren and watching them grow and mature. He would spend many hours talking to them about God and having interesting conversations. Gary Dean Ketchum, 77, passed away April 1, 2024, at Central Wyoming Hospice, surrounded by his family and friends. He lived a rich, full life. His desire is that everyone meet him in heaven for a big family reunion. He is survived by his wife of 56 years, Geraldine Ketchum, daughters Kendra, Luke, and Mike, Levita Ketchum, and Valerie and Jason Everett, grandchildren Eddie Luke, Jesse and Max Tashi, Lacey and Faith Everett, and many nieces and nephews. The youngest of 10, he is also survived by a brother, Ernie Ketchum, and sister, Peggy Mexker. He is preceded in death by his parents, Charles and Lily Ketchum, brothers and sisters, Levita, Carl, Madeleine, Maxine, Charles, Beverly, Barbara, and daughter, Melinda Thomas. The girls did a wonderful job getting up here and sharing a life story. Obviously, as you've heard, music was very important to Gary, and it's passed on through the generations, uh, blessed with some very musical family members. They've actually sung a song, but for the sake of their sanity, uh, they've pre-recorded it. So the girls have a song that they wanted to share with you today. What a joy, what a life, 
Good job, girls. <laughs> you heard reference to other grandchildren, in particular, um, Eddie could not be here today. Uh, he is away at college and wished he could be here, but did take the time to share a memory. Um, in a moment, we'll watch his video, and then after that is when audience participation kicks in. That is when we'll give you guys your chance to share a memory if you choose. And I'll have instructions for that in just a moment once we've heard from Eddie. Author Dorothy Hyde wrote, Without service, we would not have a strong quality of life. It's important to the person who serves as well as the recipient. It's the way in which we ourselves grow and develop. If I could describe a defining trait of my grandpa Gary, it would be service, because he was always willing to help others. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Luke, and I am Gary's grandson. My grandpa devoted his life to serving in various roles, such as a janitor, school bus driver, an elder at the church, a father, and most important, a servant of God. I always joked with him saying he should have become a minister. As I am studying theology to one day be a pastor. My grandpa exemplified life and calling we all as believers have. As we grieve the loss of a strong pillar in our lives, we also are recipients of the many blessings and service he poured into our lives. Just as Dorothy Height said, we ourselves being recipients also grow and develop. He would wish for us to live out Christ's mission a theology degree, degree or any degree did not define my grandpa. And if you knew him, neither did eating vegetables. <laughs> Exemplifying Christ defined his life and purpose. My grandpa Gary, as a servant of God, wholeheartedly lived his life according to God's way. My hope for us today is to remember Gary for who he was and to live our lives the way he did. For a better day is coming where we will meet him again around the tree of life and share with him the blessings he poured out into our lives and help us live like God's servants. All right. It's now your opportunity. If you'd like to add some uh, memories to this conversation, the one thing that we do ask, though, is that Jerry would like to be able to see you while you do your, your sharing. We have a chair and a microphone up front that will make it easier for her to be able to see you and therefore also be uh, a little bit more, uh, it'll help her understand you a little bit better as well. So if you have a memory you'd like to share, we'd invite you to come forward. We'll take a few moments for this uh, as we just remember Gary. Come on up, Sam. Hard. Okay. Come on. 
So, I, the memory I want to share, Gary was the last surviving of the trio, and it was my dad, Gordon Gers, and Gary, we were working on the addition to the school gym, and we were, we we're up on the second floor, and I'm listening to Gary and my dad just razzing on Gordon. So I'm seeing the pastor and the, basically the two held, head elders of the church just cutting it up. And, you know, all three of them, that was there. They were all had contagious smiles and they all loved each other dearly. And I look forward to the next time I get to see the three of them together. Amen. I remember every Christmas Eve, we would get to go out to dinner with Gary, <laughs> usually at Perkins, <laughs> and he would always order half time and half regular Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. All right, I see Ron coming forward. I'm sure he has a story or two to share. <laughs> Remember, this is being recorded, so. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, Gary and I have known each other for probably 61 years, to be exact. Um, got a little feedback there. Um, we <laughs> a friend is someone that you can... Uh, work with that you can enjoy life with that you can um, talk to one another and uh, that you can argue with <laughs> and never win with Gary some of you know what I'm talking about but um, we had a we had a good run um, we're going to miss Gary. Thank you. I just need it to be known that I fixed the best Pepsi and half diets for Gary. I just need that to be known. And I'm his favorite waitress. <laughs> and I'm from Angie from the Platte River restaurant. So I just need it to know. Early in the Mountain Road Singers' careers, um, we would go different places and sometimes make recordings. And we were in Colorado one year, and um, we were in Colorado one year, and while we were there recording, we took a break and had lunch and came back, and he was not one to be outdone. Never the last word did you have. But he... This was one time, I think he was at a loss for words, and he said something smart to me, like, what's all over your face? And I said, well, there's probably something from lunch. And I picked his tie up from his chest <laughs> and wiped my mouth. <laughs> and he didn't have a word to say, not a word, but it was good. So Gary was my mom's uncle, but I refused to call him my great Uncle Gary because he wanted us to know how great he was, and I refused. Um, 
My pet name for Gary Dean Ketchum was Gory Green Ketchup instead. And so he lovingly called me Tacky or Aki Tack or something with Tacky. And Levita now carries that on for him, which is good because I will miss that pet name for sure. I used to walk down the hall and sit on Gary's lap while he was working on the computer. And before that, I would walk to the kitchen and grab a snack, and he would walk down the hall, and I would try to find him. And then I would do that. This section, Isabel has something she wants I to share. I remember I always used to walk up to him and he's like, how's your day? How was school? And I'd be like, pretty good. And he's like, it isn't great? <laughs> and he'd always make this face expression like, are you kidding? Are you serious right now? <laughs> and it was always so funny. And he'd always make us me laugh. And it was All right. Well, like I said, we'll have more opportunities for you to share during the meal afterward. I'm sure the family, like I said as well, would love to hear from you. It's just time goes on with little reminders of the impact that Gary has made. You did hear a few references to the Mountain Road Singers. And so at this time, we have a slideshow, some more memories from Gary throughout his life. And uh, the music that you'll hear in the background will come from the Mountain Road Singers. Nope, oh, sorry. It's the uh, it's the slideshow first, and then the <laughs> and then this one. <laughs> sorry, Liz. My fault. Should be the next bit, the next slide, the one with Gary on it. There we go. And 
Tomorrow 
forgot to check the box that says stop playing or don't rewind, so it's my fault. We do have one more song from the Mountain Road Singers. Uh, this is a song called Rise Again. And uh, it's a simple message is, though you might put me in the ground, I will rise again. And that's all possible thanks to Jesus Christ, Gary's Lord and Savior, all of our Lord and Savior. And so we have one more song from the Mountain Road Singers, and we'll have that here in just a second. honor to be standing here for my brother Gary, a very dear friend. Remember when I first really got acquainted with him, the Mountain Road Singers had come to Casper where I was a pastor somewhere around 40 years ago. And I wondered why the Mountain Road Singer Group would come and ask me what they were going to sing. And then my church members would go to Gary and ask him when we were going to take the offering. We looked quite a lot alike in those days. And I felt it was a privilege. I had an older brother that was born the same year that Gary was born. 
1970, he was killed in a motorcycle accident, and I missed him dearly, and Gary kind of became a surrogate older brother for me. They had a lot of fun together. A while back, Gary had gotten sick, and we had a, an anointing service. It was a great time. And then before I even got out of the house, Gary said he was feeling a lot better. And I thank the Lord. Recently, he had a couple strokes and we had another anointing service. And, and this time he didn't feel better. And it reminded me so much of the story about another friend in John the 11th chapter, Lazarus. In the ver first verses it says, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore the brothers, the sisters sent for him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. I'm talking about the second anointing this time. This family was a friend where Jesus and his disciples could go any time and talk and be at ease. They had seen Jesus heal a lot of people through the years. And now Lazarus was sick. Verse 5 says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when they called for him to come, Jesus waited two more days. He could have gone right away. If he had, he would have gotten there before Lazarus died and he would have healed him. And they would have rejoiced. But we wouldn't know what happens at death and what it's really about. That's why Jesus said, it's best for you that I wait. Best for us, you and I. That he waits so that we can know about death and resurrection and life and God's grace. So Jesus, after two days, said, it's time to go now. And the disciples said, Lord, they don't like you down there. It's dangerous. And Jesus said, you can work while it's day. And they said, well, what about Lazarus? And he said, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. That's in verse 11. The disciples understood that to mean that he was taking a nap. And they said, if he's sleeping, he's going to get well. And Jesus said, Lazarus is dead. It's interesting in the Bible. The Bible talks about death as being asleep 52 different times. It's not a scary, terrible thing for the person who's sleeping. It's hard for us because our loved one, we won't see until Jesus comes, but he's sleeping, resting. It's a dreamless, peaceful sleep. Jesus said, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. And so they started out for Bethany. When Jesus got to Bethany, he stopped just outside of town. And Martha heard that he was there. And she came running out to, to see Jesus. And she said, the first thing she said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. It's your fault. And it was. If he had been there, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And we wouldn't know. He said, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And 
Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And she said, yeah, sure, at the end of time, at the last day, at the resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And if they believe in me, they never die. He's talking about the second death there. She said, I believe you're the Messiah and whatever you ask, God will do. And then she took off to go get her sister, Mary. And the first thing Mary said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. I'm so glad for those parts of the story because if we get a little upset sometimes with God because he doesn't do what we want at this moment when we want it, it's all right, he understands and he loves you. And he'll still do what he promised. And after that, he said, uh, where have you laid him? And so they took him out to the cemetery. It's a word that means resting place, in case you're interested. That's what cemetery the word means. And as he got out there, the Bible says that Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in all of the Bible. It's in verse 35. Why did he weep? He knew he was going to raise Lazarus back to life. He wept for several reasons. One of them is that as soon as Lazarus was raised, they would start plotting how they could kill him again. That the sisters would have to go through two death experiences with their brother. And he wept for them. He probably wept for us today too because death is hard. Even though we know the promise and we know the the resurrection and the life, and we know it's certain and sure and pretty soon, it's still hard. And Jesus wept. And then they got to the tomb and Jesus said, roll the stone away. The sisters said, Lord, uh, he's been in there four days now and, and it, it'll stink. And Jesus said, if you want to see God's grace, roll a stone away. There's things that we have to do to receive God's blessing. We have to choose to accept them. We have to choose to believe them. So they rolled the stone away, and I'm sure the stink rolled out with the stone. Jesus prayed a short prayer. He said, Father, I want them to know that you and I are in this together, as always. And then he said, Lazarus, come out. And the stink stopped. And Lazarus somehow made it to the door of the tomb. Still wrapped in grave clothes like a mummy. I don't know how he made it. He must have hopped. He hadn't been anywhere. He wasn't wearing a robe. He didn't have a harp. Still, just like they put him in there. Because the truth about death is that you sleep until Jesus wakes you up. And Jesus said, loose him, let him go. And they did. One day... He's going to say, Gary, come out. And Gary's going to come out just like he went in. Only he'll be brand new. He'll be able to play that guitar again. And and if he wants to, he can have a foot race with a deer and beat it. And I can't wait. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 51, says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And there it's talking about death again. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. 
Big words. Simple meetings. Corruptible means that you get older and older and older. And if we didn't put off in corruption and we went to heaven, we'd get older and older and older until we'd be laying on a couch somewhere, but we couldn't die because we're mortal. He gives us incorruption. We stay eternally young and healthy and vital. And immortal. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul wrote, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. I told you 52 times it talks about death as falling asleep or being asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. The only hope there is is in Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. We all get there together. We all get there in that wonderful city of God, the new Jerusalem. Can't wait. We get to go through the city together and see for the first time together and enjoy together the angel choirs. And so together now, We'll get to listen to Erin as she sings about the new Jerusalem. One day, we'll see it together. The angels will join her in singing. Great I am, Christ. 
stand for closing prayer. Our Father in heaven, praise you today for your grace and goodness. Praise you for your love and kindness. Lord Jesus, we praise you for paying the price so that we can have life for taking all our sins upon yourself and taking our place on that cross so that one day very soon you could come and take us to your place, to the new Jerusalem. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Once again, on behalf of the family, the friends, Casper Seventh Advent Church, we want to thank you for being here today as we remembered Gary's life. We do want to invite you to head over to our gymnasium for a meal, uh, to share some memories. But one last thing at the very beginning, I asked you to pull out your phones, make sure that they're silenced. I need you to pull out your phones again and open your camera app because. We have a slide we want to put on the screen here. You've heard some music from the Mountain Road Singers. We have digitized their albums and made them available as MP3s. If you scan that QR code on your way out the door, come on up. You should be able to pull up all uh, 30 MP3s from our Mountain Road Singers and access them on your phone. If you cannot get that to load or if you're watching along online, eh, boom, Valerie just received a link. And you can bug her for that link, and she can send that to you, uh, make it available for you. Um, So it's just a little gift from the family to you guys so that you have access to wonderful music. Once again, thank you for being here. May God bless you.